Hello everyone and welcome back to another Starfield console mod video. I've been finishing covering Elden Ring, the DLC, and can go back to covering some more of the Starfield mods for Xbox. And all the mods are also on PC. Since I've had over a week away from the game, there have been a bunch of cool mods added and I wanted to go over some of the ones I've missed out on. So we're going to jump straight into it and look at 10 more of the awesome mods added into Starfield. And we're going to start with Immersive Sabres. Lightsabers are finally in Starfield. The game currently has three new standalone lightsabers, which are just melee weapons and a perk tree that unlocks projectile deflections once you have the blue star power bar. And the sabers include the combat tech Polaris, the Arboron Nova Beam Saber, and the Old Earth Proton Saber. These weapons have workbench upgrades as well and can spawn on enemies, vendors, or with legendary effects like any other melee weapon. There's also a brand new lightsaber perk system to help improve them. Rank 1, 50% chance to reflect projectiles while blocking with a lightsaber. Reflecting powerful projectiles will stagger you though. Rank 2, 75% chance to reflect projectiles while blocking with a lightsaber. Rank 3, reflect powerful projectiles with no longer stagger you. 50% less cost per reflected projectile. And of course rank 4, 100% chance to reflect projectiles while blocking with a lightsaber. The lightsabers look really cool and it's definitely something we needed added with all the Star Wars mods that there are available and of course the mod author plans to add more different types of lightsabers into the game as well so a mod definitely worth adding to your game. Interact with pull up bars and all weight benches. Normally weight benches can only be used by the player when they are built and placed in an outpost. This mod makes all other weight benches found in the usable world and pull up bars usable as well. The existing NPC animations will play when used. The animation takes a while when you move to exit. It may take a moment to finish and the mod is only for the sake of interactivity and just makes the game a bit more immersive. So it's as simple as that. Sidekick follower. Say hello to sidekick, your new best friend and follower that doesn't count as one of your companions. You'll find him in the Stone Root Inn in Aquila. He has a hatred for the Crimson Fleet and will simply follow you around and help you in combat and still allow you to have other followers at the same time. The UC Marine Tactical Armor. New UC Marine armor sets have been added to the game. They add in five variations of the armor called the UC War Dog, UC Anti Xeno, UC Urban War, UC Security Star Law, and UC Sec Defense Assault. And they have tried to cover three different configurations for each of these armors, including a Rifleman, Heavy Weapon, and Breacher variation. If you like any of these new armor sets, they can be purchased from the UC Distributor vendor in New Atlantis. The Ryujin Apartment 306. This mod adds to the game the Ryujin Apartment into Neon. The mod also comes with a furnished version which I've added in the video. However, if you just want to decorate it yourself, you can add the non-furnished version. Inside the Ryujin Apartment building on the main strip of Neon is where you will find it. To find the key, you have to head up the stairs next to the chunks in Ebside, and it's lying on a dead body, and that is where you will find the key to the apartment. The apartment is small, but has a crate with a thousand capacity, five weapon racks, three mannequins for spacesuits and clothing, two coolers, one safe in the bedroom, and one small storage box. It's not designed to be a base, but rather a home, and so it doesn't cram in all the workbenches and stuff like that. It's more of a place to stay while you roleplay living in Neon while you're a Ryujin operative. And the apartment tries to reflect that, but it still looks really good. Lore friendly backgrounds and traits for pirates. The mod adds to the game lore friendly backgrounds and traits to let you play the game as a space pirate. And there are three new backgrounds, including Bloody Hand of Neptune, where you love to board ships and make people suffer. Pirate Captain, where you are elected to the captain of your own ship and crew. Ghost of Mars, where you enjoy killing and raiding and then disappearing unnoticed. And to go with these backgrounds, the mod also offers nine brand new traits to help you out. So Bloodthirsty, you crave your enemy's blood over battle spoils. Enjoyment from killing grants 15% more XP per kill and a 5% intimidation boost. However, you take 15% more damage and lose 5% more companion affinity per negative interaction. The Ghost, you end ship combat swiftly, your ship weapons shoot 10% more accurately, but your ship repair decreases by 10%. 
Quartermaster, respected and knowledgeable, you were chosen to lead. Gain companion affinity, 10% easier, but lose 10% max cargo due to relinquishing Quartermaster duties. Swashbuckler, master of melee weapons, you gain 15% crit damage, but lose 15% reload speed. Explosive expert, skilled with explosives, you gain a 10% increase in explosive limb damage, but also take 10% more explosive limb damage. Credit launderer, expert in selling illegal contraband, 10% increase to selling prices, but also 10% increase to bounty when caught. Revered captain, loved by your crew, you gain companion affinity 20% easier, but spend 50% more when purchasing items. Pirate Lord, as a descendant of a Pirate Lord, crafting costs are reduced by 10%, but you take 10% more damage. Dreaded Captain, a cruel captain, feared by all, you gain 15% in intimidation and weapon damage, but lose 15% in persuasion and bartering. Overall, a nice mod that allows you the better opportunity to play as the space pirate you've always wanted to in-game. My price, no one dies. This is a story-related mod that means you don't have to let any of the NPCs die. Normally the game will automatically choose your favourite and second favourite companions for these respectively and their fate once selected is permanent for the playthrough. The My Price mod gives you an in-game pop-up menu to bypass the game's auto selection so you can quest with any of your companions whenever you like without having to think about the choices happening later in the game. So with the mod all main quest options are preserved, you will skip the funeral memorial service scene, skip the mini quest to retrieve your dead companion's belongings, skip the parts where companions want to talk to you about dead NPCs, avoid all subtly modified random dialogue that references members of Constellation dying. When opting to have no one die, it seamlessly modifies Noel's dialogue with Vladimir after defending the Lodge. It also sets the companions who normally would have died to appear later as an emissary. And you'll also receive a follow-up quest to get the artifact from Scow called No Sudden Moves, which is normally skipped in New Game Plus when using Starborn powers to prevent anyone dying. Overpowered Weapon Pack. The mod adds to the game for independent and overpowered weapons to the industrial workbench. Each weapon is legendary, has 10 times the amount of power of a regular gun, and comes with the best attachments and perks for the style of weapon. The weapons are Dystopia, a high-powered ballistic machine gun, Umami, a high-powered and long-distance sniper rifle, Eclipse, a fully automatic EM machine gun, and Luminance, an overpowered legendary cutter with much greater distance. Star Wars Clone Wars outfits, including Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme. This is yet another Star Wars mod, and it's going to be crazy when someone eventually adds all of these into one super 50 gigabyte size mod. But we have one more armor set for Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme. So you get the General Kenobi, the outfit worn by one of the most iconic Star Wars heroes, Obi-Wan Kenobi. During the Clone Wars, it comes as regular clothing, spacesuit, and has a fitting jetpack. General Skywalker, Obi-Wan's Padawan also comes with his outfit, you can wear it as a regular clothing and a spacesuit and comes with its very own jetpack as well. Padme Amidala, last but not least, the Queen also joins the fight with her outfit she wears during the Battle of Genosis and you can craft it with or without the cape and you can get it as a spacesuit as well. She has her very own jetpack to go with the spacesuit. Overall, I really like this mod, especially the Padme outfit for Sarah. I think it's one of my favorite outfits I've seen for her in-game, so I think I will keep this equipped. So I really like this Star Wars mod. Our final mod is a water retexture mod. Originally, textures were mostly 1K and 512 megabytes with some 2K. Now textures are a mix of 4K and 2K. It's not a huge difference to the base game, but it's still noticeable, although I would like it to be a bit calmer so you can see through the water a bit more, but I do like the amount of green that it reduces in the water, especially around New Atlantis. But overall, there's not a lot to say about a retexture mod, it just makes the texture of the water just a bit higher quality. Guys, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like and subscribe to see more Starfield mods. Leave a comment as well about your favourite mods, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.